Good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I'm beginning my tutorial series on microeconomics, um, and we are going to look at consumer problem. Uh, so what we are going to look under this topic is a situation whereby um, you've been asked to maximize your utility subject to um, an income. So that is, you are a consumer. Let's say you go to the market and we have tomatoes, onions, peppers, and the rest, and with their respective prices and um, giving you a certain amount of money that you have or your income. What is the uh, amount of X1, X2, S3, or what is the amount that you are going to choose for pepper, tomato, and onions in order to maximize your utility? Is okay. So, so I'm going to write my utility function. So, uh, okay, so let me say, so today the objective of this, uh, this discussion or tutorial today is to derive our Marshalling demand function from a given utility function. So let's say um, you have your utility function and you've been asked to derive your marginal, uh, you've been asked to derive your Marshalling or the ordinary demand function from it. So first of all, um, let me write the utility function that we have. So supposing um, we've been given this utility function, which uh, this is the CES uh, utility function, constant elasticity. So let's say you have your utility with a function of S1 and X2. What it means, um, the utility that you have, you, you drive, it depends on commodity X1, X2. And the function has been given at this. So now the problem that we're going to do is maximize your utility, which is a function of X1 and X2, which is a function of X1 and X2, yeah, and X2 subject to um, summation of your price i multiply by the commodity that you are using should be equals to your income right so where this x i belongs to positive real numbers okay, so what we have here is um, we're going to maximize our utility subject to the budget constraint which is what we are saying that the price multiplied by the quantity of x i that you are um, consuming some when you sum up should be equals to your income. What it means that you cannot spend more than your income, right? And you we expect that you spend exactly the income that you have because if you spend less than that, it means you have um some money left that you, you could have also used. And the consumer theory we have a um, monotonicity that is always more is preferred. So there's, there's no way a consumer will spend something below the income. They will always spend up towards the income that is given to them. Great. So with this, um, the first thing that you're supposed to do is to set up your um, Lagardian. So first, I'm going to set up my Lagardian function. Okay, uh, so this becomes the Lagardian function. Then lambda is equal, uh, L is equal to X1, read the power elasticity, all this. So this is the utility function, and then subject to the budget constraint. So um, first of all, when you look at the information that we have in our Lagardian um, equation, the information that we do not know about x1, x2, and and um, x1, x2, and the lambda, because always, as as a consumer, you know your income. You sorry, you know your price. You also know your income, right? So prices and income are always given, but it is the x1, x2 that we're supposed to find out uh, the quantity of x1, x2 that we are going to consume, right? And there is a third uh, variable here, lambda, that we do not also know. So what I'm going to do here is to differentiate. Each of the, the unknown variables, I'm going to differentiate the equation with respect to each of the unknown variables. So first, I will start with Lx1. That means I'm going to differentiate this uh, Lagrangian function with respect to x1. Now, if I want to differentiate with respect to x1, this here will come here becomes 1 over 5 into bracket x1 phi plus x2 phi here then it becomes one over phi this minus one you subtract one from it then you differentiate the x1 in the bracket that will give me um phi x1 um phi minus one yeah and when i differentiate there's also x1 so when i would have minus lambda P1 equals to zero. So I call this equation one. Now I differentiate again with respect to two. 
Now, when you look at this very well, you could see that um, this expression here that I've differentiated, right, is the same as um, differentiating u with respect to what x1. And that is the same as what marginal utility of x1. Is okay. So what it means is that then this expression here just simply means marginal utility of x1 minus lambda of p1 is equal to zero. So that is what this expression here means. Great. Now let's also differentiate again respect to x2 because x2 is another component that we do not know. And when I differentiate respect to x2, I'm also going to have one over phi because um, this one will come here, it comes one over phi, x1, phi plus x2, phi, or into bracket one over phi, minus one, you subtract one from it, right? Subtract one, minus one. And then differential this in the bracket, which is this expression here, it comes multiplied by phi x2, phi minus one. Then minus, when you differentiate the one that we have, you have minus q2 lambda equals to zero. So this is equation, also equation two. So this expression is also the same as um, marginal utility of x2 minus lambda p1 equals to zero. Is okay? Okay, so the next one is also to differentiate with respect to lambda. And when you differentiate with respect to lambda, I'm just going to have y minus p1 x1 minus p2 x2 equals to zero. So I will call this equation three. It's okay now. So look at some, um, I'll say, you know, um, anytime that you're looking for the optimal solution, you always say that the marginal rate of substitution for let's say um, x1, x2 equals to price ratio, p1 over p2, right? And this one can only be achieved when we divide equation one by equation two. Now equation one in equation one, we had it as, um, when we differentiated, we had it as um, x1, x1, so it was one over phi, multiplied by x1, phi, plus x2, phi, or into bracket, one over phi, minus one, phi, x2, phi minus one, equals to lambda p1, no, sorry, x1, yeah, equals to lambda p1, all over one over phi, x1, phi, plus x2, phi, one over phi minus one, multiplied by this, phi, um, x2, phi minus one, all over lambda p2, right? Okay, so this expression is basically the same as marginal rate of substitution of x1 over x2, right? Marginal rate of substitution equals to price ratio. So this one is going to cancel this one. And this expression will also cancel this. This one cancel this. So we now have the expression as x2, um, sorry, how it does? x2, um, sorry, x2 exponent pi minus one, all over, so, so this one is x1, not x2, okay, x1. So it's x1 over phi minus one, all over x2, phi, phi minus one is equals to p1 over p2. I hope it's okay up to this point. Okay, so from here, we can do cross multiply. So when we cross multiply, we are going to have um, P2, X1, phi minus one is equals to P1, X2, phi minus one is okay. So I'm divided here by P2, here by P2. So I have it as this, now I have X1, Phi minus one is equals to P1 over P2 into bracket X2 Phi minus one. Now um, my interest is to make X1 a subject so I can multiply the exponent by one over 
phi minus one. In mathematics, whatever you do for the left hand side, you do the same thing for the right hand side. So this one can cancel here. So I now have x1 is equals to p1 over p2, one over phi minus one, multiplied by x2, because I'm going to multiply both sides also by one over phi minus one, one over phi minus one, and this cancels this. So at the end of the day, we have this as your x1, right? Now, once you have this as your x1, I can call this one equation four, is okay? So I can put this expression into the budget constraint. Is okay? So the budget constraint is what? The budget constraint is P1, X1, plus P2, X2, equals to Y. Is okay? And now you've got an equation for it to be a sort, P, um, P1, okay, sorry, X1. So I can see if that's the case, then P1, Instead of S1, I write what I have in equation four, which was P1 over P2, all into brackets, um, one over pi minus one, multiply by X1, right? So this expression here represents what X1, multiply by, sorry, X2, right? So this expression here represents S1, plus P2 multiplied by X2 equals to Y, right? So the common term here is what x2, so I can factor x2 out. Now when I factor x2 out, I'm going to have it as um, p1 um, exponent. Because this p1 here and this one is multiplying, I can say the same as what one over five minus one and plus one. The exponent is being multiplied by plus one, all over p2 into bracket one over five minus one plus P2 is okay, equals to Y. So um, simple mathematics, I can just multiply the LCM here by this. So I can just multiply this one by this, it's okay. Uh, so yeah, I can just multiply this one by that. Yeah, okay, great. So I'll now have it as what um, P2 plus P2, right, okay. So when I do the cross multiply, I'm just going to have it also as what, um, P1, one over five minus one is plus one, um, plus P2 um, into bracket. That is also going to be the same thing, one over five minus one plus one, all over P2 into bracket, one over five minus one. So I'm adding the exponent here because of the law of indices. When With the law of indices, any time that you are multiplying exponents, you add, right? If the bases are the same and the exponents are different, you just add. This is just um, the law of indices, multiplicative uh, law of indices. So this multiplied by this one is equals to y, right? So in this case, when I just, um, if I just want to simplify this part, it's just going to be the same as multiplying this, um, this expression here, by this and dividing everything by one over P1 is okay. So then I'm going to have it as, um, when I do that, I'm just going to have it as um, PX2 into brackets, P2 into brackets, P over five minus one plus um, P1 over P um, one minus P all over, P2, one over five minus one um, equals to Y. Okay, so for the sake of a very good friend of mine, Peter, um, let me try and simplify this expression because I know if Peter in any means chance on this one, he'll get confused. So if I have this one as, let's say, um, one over P from the previous expression, minus one, right? Plus one. Is okay. It's just normal mathematics terms. I'm just going to cross multiply, which is going to give me one plus one multiplied by p minus one all over p minus one, and that is equals to what one plus p minus one all over p. So this cancels us over p minus one. So this cancels this, and you have it as what p over p minus one. So that is how how come um, we are having this expression. So sorry, this is p minus one. It's okay. 
So that is how come we are having all this expression here. So let me clear it. I did this um, just for the sake of a very good friend of mine, Peter, who is always asking questions about how um, I'm able to derive these things. Yeah. Okay. So we get to this one, right? So if I'm going, I'm looking for x2, I just divide. So I'll just divide here and say x2 is equals to divide this expression, right? So that is going to give me p2 all over 1 over p minus 1 all over um, p2 into bracket p all over alpha pi minus 1 plus p1 into bracket pi all over pi minus 1. Um, what y? So now this becomes x2, right? And this x2 here is what we call the Maschine demand for x2, which is a function of fourth. If you check, it's a function of fourth p1, p2, and y. So anytime that you solve um, the consumer problem and you have the optimal x to be a function of fourth, um, Prices and then income, we call it the machine demand function or the ordinary demand function. It's okay, the ordinary demand function, great. So now that we have gotten um, X2 to be this, then we can replace this X2 into the X1 equation with equation four and half um, our hot so that we can get our X1. So that we can also get as well get our X1. That in this case, then our X1, which um, we got to be, so from equation four, so I'm just quoting this from equation four. So with equation four, we had our x1 to be um, p1 all over p2 into bracket one over pi minus one multiplied by the x2. And now we are solved and we've gotten our x2, right? Gotten our x2, so I'm, I'm only going to replace that with this. So I'll say that my x1 is equals to um, p1 one over pi minus one all over p2, one over pi minus one. I've just expanded what I have in the bracket, right? Multiplied by x2. And we had x2 to be the same as sort. x2, we got x2 to be um, p2, one over pi minus one, multiplied by y. And then you have it as p1, um, pi all over pi minus alpha, plus um, p2, all over five, five, um, five minus one. Great, it's okay. So this expression here can cancel this. Then you have your S one also as well. S one is a function of prices and then income. I'm just using this as a vector of prices, right? So the equation of price one, price two is also equals to p one one over five minus alpha all over p two sorry all over p1 pi into bracket pi minus one plus p2 into bracket phi over pi minus one multiplied by one why right so this is what we call the marshalling demand function a uh, marshalling demand for x1 so you can see that x is a function of what p and y so anytime that uh, you are giving the a uh, direct utility function and you are asked uh, to find your a machine demand function. This is what they are saying. They just set up your Lagrangian function, differentiate respect to the excess that you have in it, and then lambda. After that, you try to equate the equation one and um, to equation two so that you, you can have that uh, always um, the equilibrium term that we need. That is the marginal rate of start, marginal rate of substitution for x1 and x2 should always be equal to the price ratio, which and um, in my subsequent videos, I will use a um, graph to also depict it. Once you, you do that, the, the rest becomes so just a simple algebra, algebra and then a bit of simplification, then you get your x1, x2. So this expression here is what we call the machine demand function for x1. And this expression that we have here is what we call um, the machine demand function for x2. So thank you and in my next video, um, I will be looking at the elasticity of um, substitution. Thank you, and um, do not forget to subscribe. Bye.